Hi, in this video, I am going to talk about media optimization. Media optimization is basically the formulation of optimum medium for the product formation. And an optimized medium should support maximum product formation. Media optimization can be defined as components of a medium and physical conditions are varied in concentration or changed to get better productivity. Let me explain this. The components of medium include so many components. It can contain carbon source, nitrogen source, minerals, vitamins, growth factors, inducers, inhibitors, etc. And in almost all, all cases, this media is obtained from different sources. One single waste product of an industry or byproduct of another industry may not have all the components required for the fermentation. So we may have to get a carbon source from one place and nitrogen source from another place. Uh, growth factors need to be added then the minerals need to be added so so many things need to be combined to get a better media so the question is in what proportion we have to do it how much carbon source need to be taken how much nitrogen source need to be included in the media in some cases the most of the carbon sources also have nitrogen in it so as the carbon source if the carbon source containing five percent of nitrogen how much more and nitrogen source need to be added the nitrogen source may have the minerals and the growth factors or the water we are using for the fermentation may have the trace elements so in order to get the better media or the best media we need to consider all these uh, parameters basically the proportion in which we need to add these all components is important so first thing is that components of the medium the proportion of the components to be added in the medium secondly physical conditions physical conditions including temperature ph incubation time inoculum size etc these things to be controlled how much water should be the temperature of the uh, fermenter during the fermentation or it may not be a fixed temperature at the beginning of fermentation it may be low in the by the as the fermentation progress it may be increased the ph it may shows the similar pattern in the initial phase this ph may be acidic uh, during the fermentation it may go to the neutral or the basic ph so our question is what is what is the best ph to be maintained for the better productivity what is the best temperature for the better productivity so we all concentrate by com, uh, by manipulating components of medium and the physical condition we want to get better productivity or the best yield so that the industry will be, become more economical so what we do the components of medium and the physical conditions are varied in concentration or changed to get the better productivity so the basic aim is to get more yield so we can manipulate the composition of the media or we can manipulate the physical conditions uh, it also includes the components of medium also say uh, there are so many different carbon sources which one we should use whether we use say uh, sulfate based liquor or we use some starch things like that or cellulose so this choice also made in media optimization and for an industry, for a bioprocess industry, the media optimization is a continuous practice. Because once we found the medium, the optimized medium, then maybe a new mutant may come with a better productivity. In order to satisfy the needs of the new mutant, we need to optimize the medium again. The conditions need to be revised again. Or the new strain may come with a better productivity. The need for the strain may be different. Or existing strain may need this much amount of nitrogen, but the new strain may not need that much. So the process is always on, is an ongoing process. We need to do it again and again to satisfy the needs of the microorganism. Uh, in this discussion, we call these components of medium and the physical conditions are the uh, as parameters, the optimization of parameters. In media optimization, we basically do the optimization of parameters. We are optimizing two different types of parameters. Parameters including process conditions. Conditions means physical parameters, which include temperature, pH, aeration, agitation, so on and so forth. And media components. Media components, as we discussed earlier, it includes the carbon source, nitrogen source, or which carbon source need to be used, which nitrogen source should be selected, minerals, growth factors, etc. So we just call it as parameters. Uh, in this discussion and uh, in the optimization we may use different combinations or sequences sequences is like how much agita agitation the mixing we should give for a fermenter maybe we should we can give high agitation during the initial phase of fermentation maybe the agitation level can be reduced step by step so the sequence of event is also important 
for temperature it also happen uh, from some cultures we may be adding some of the nutrients at, as fed batch uh, mode in that case how much it should be provided so it's not only about the combinations it's all uh, also about sequence of uh, this media process conditions and the media components how in what sequence we should add or in what sequence we should control the physical parameters the mode media uh, optimization uh, process is basically of two different types one is called open ended another is closed ended system the difference is very simple in an open ended system all parameters are analyzed for optimization there will be many different parameters if you look at the carbon source if you look at all the possible carbon sources there, there may be maybe 100 different carbon sources available for an industry so in an open ended system we should consider all the possibilities there may be different temperature maybe temperature from ranging from 20 degree to 100 uh, maybe 60 degree all temperature will be analyzed so in an open ended system all possible parameters will be analyzed in an open ended system so it's a whole study we are studying all all parameters that can cause a change in yield so we are looking into each and every parameters very thoroughly and we are trying to improve the yield our basic aim is to improve the yield but an open ended system we are looking into all parameters but in a closed ended system we are not looking into all parameters we are uh, changing or manipulating fixed number of parameters uh, because there are so many different types of parameters there it is very difficult to in an open ended system it is very difficult to analyze the effect of all these parameters all the physical and uh, media uh, constituents at a different levels is always difficult so in closed ended system we are not manipulating everything we are selecting a few set of parameters which is critical for the yield and we are manipulating that so uh, the parameters which we think doesn't have any effect on the uh, yield we are not actually manipulating those parameters maybe the water source we cannot easily change that so in a closed ended system we can omit that maybe the mineral composition we can omit the carbon source for an industry may be the only available carbon source cheap and economical uh, will be a single one so we are not touching it so in a closed ended system we are looking into a fixed number of parameters in an open ended system we are looking into all parameters uh, so the open ended system uh, for the working with an open ended system is always difficult because we need to consider all the parameters and there may be changes of course but in closed end system it's more practical but the difficulty with the closed end system is that many parameters which may have an impact on yield is omitted we are not considering it so we are not studying its effect so we may end up in uh, not so good media so what is the general strategy of a bioprocess industry uh, the optimization process start with the open end system and we are analyzing all the factors and we will uh, we are not going to the deep study we are just analyzing which one is good to which one is bad just like a solo question uh, once we found the uh, best parameters then we'll move to the closed end system in closed end system we are studying a detailed analysis how much concentration is needed how much temperature is needed what is the exact ph the bacteria prefer so such thing will be done later so what i say in general practice we will go with the open end system first shortlist the parameters then go for the closed end system so we can use this both of these parameters together for a uh, media optimization practice there are so many different types of media optimization methods uh, it include borrowing component replacing biological mimicry one factor at a time factorial design plaquet berman response of methodology evolutionary operation artificial neural network fuzzy logic we are going to the details of all these parameters so these are all our methods that can be used for media optimization and the initial methods are open ended methods when we go deep these are our closed ended methods first one is borrowing just as like the name implies we are borrowing the media composition from somewhere else suppose uh, in laboratory if i ask uh, students to make a particular media Uh, let's say a uh, km broth i ask you to make the km broth how do you make the km broth i am not giving you any uh, compositions 
so in that case you can either go to the previous records for the media composition or you can take a book from the library if you are too studious you can go and take take a book laboratory manual and look for the km media or you can type in internet and find the suitable media composition so you are getting it from somewhere that type of optimization is called borrowing we are borrowing the composition of the medium from someone else uh, like it's basically an open ended system uh, because we are looking into all possibilities so media composition and the process conditions are obtained from literature already published the data maybe somebody else is doing the same work so just like you are getting from seniors or getting from the books or getting from the internet this industry is also getting the media composition from someone else if i am going to start a antibiotic making industry i can actually use the media which is other antibiotic manufacturers are using but sometimes i may be using a different organism in those case maybe i can take the media composition of the same genus or the same species or if it's available i can look for the industry which is using the same strain of the organism if i can found an industry which is using same strain i can actually borrow the composition from them if the same strain is not available we will go up in the taxa so the maximum similar organism uh, used in industry will be selected for borrowing the media composition uh, then it's a very easy method we don't have to do anything we need to find it from somewhere else maybe you need to borrow it from some industry Uh, it's an basically an easy method uh, but the thing is that it doesn't guarantee the optimum medium many of the industry all, almost all industries do not disclose their media composition and in books you may find some media composition that may not work for your industry or even if you able to find the media composition of the industry which is using the same strain the situation in, the, in that industry may be different from yours so if you are putting your industry in kerala you are looking for the media composition of an industry which is in U united states the availability of media components is different in us you may be getting enough way the waste product of the cheese industry in india it is very difficult to get that our cheese industry is not that big so differences like that can also happen so it doesn't guarantee the best medium for you but it is a good starting point if you are just starting to get the best medium so first method to get some idea about what it has so we can go for pore second method is component replacing it's also a open ended system it's a, actually the next step of borrowing when we are looking for a media for a particular process you may be getting media composition from different places maybe from industries maybe from books literature and everything so in component replacing what we are doing we are combining we are actually comparing uh, all the media composition we are getting from the different sources and what we do we, we make a medium which is a mix of everything so we are getting media composition from different places so almost maybe all this media composition may not work for you because of the unique condition of your industry so what we do uh, we will replace some of this component with another locally available component Uh, just say uh, i said before an industry in us is using whey as their nitrogen source but that is not that much available in your place in kerala it is not that much available so what we will do we will look for replacements so we taking the media composition from somewhere so if you find some of the ingredients are difficult to get or it's expensive in your place you can actually replace it with another one in other cases maybe some of the Uh, components you can add a better component for the better yield you can add better component so in this method we are taking media composition from different places and replacing few components to get better productivity you can also do it with the physical parameters so the borrowed uh, media composition say the temperature should be 37 so maybe you can change you can change it to 38 because uh, it may that may produce better results so uh, basically we are changing few parameters to the new parameters uh, the difficulty with this method we are not studying interaction between two different components actually when we are using a carbon source along with another nitrogen source for example uh, there may be complementarity 
the carbon source may have some of its uh, some amount of nitrogen or the rare amino acids uh, the nitrogen source may not have that particular amino acids but we are using it is in combination we are getting the benefit because the carbon source is co compensating for the uh, missing amino acids of the nitrogen source but when we are changing the carbon source alone and replacing it with something else the new carbon source may not have that particular amino acid so the complementary or interaction may not be here there so the component replacing method doesn't get, uh, consider the interaction between the uh, components we are replacing only one component we are not so the whole story may change it is basically used for screening for different carbon and nitrogen sources to find which is the best carbon source or the best nitrogen source we can use component replacing it is not that much of a scientific method it's a convenient method third one biological mimicry it's a closed system in this as the name implies uh, we are actually mimicking something we are actually mimicking the biological system so the method is simple uh, simple to explain but very difficult to do what we have to do we take the microorganism which is producing the production this microorganism we go for a elemental composition analysis the elemental composition analysis say how much carbon it has how much nitrogen it is uh, have, having or the minerals composition the growth factors so we are looking into the elemental composition of the microorganism and we will get the microorganism is composed of this much amount of carbon this is much amount of nitrogen these 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 minerals are there uh, this much water content is there so we know exactly what the mi microorganism is made up of what are the vitamins it is having? What are the amino acids it is having? What are the lipids it is having? So we are conducting a very detailed study of the elemental composition of the organism and the biological composition of the organism. So after the study, we will know what the microorganism is made up of. And based on the microbial composition, the biomass composition, we are actually designing a medium. If the microorganism need this much amount of nitrogen, the microorganism is made up of this much amount of nitrogen. So we are making a medium which can provide this much amount of nitrogen to the same amount of nitrogen to the microorganism. If it need manganese in particular quantity, the microorganism contain this much amount of manganese, our medium also able to provide that much amount of the mineral. So likewise, we can make a complementary medium depending on the elemental composition of the microorganism. We may also analyze the product elemental composition of the product. So we can actually complement the uh, production also. So that's a method. Uh, then the medium is formulated based on the mass balance strategy. We are balancing the elemental composition of the microorganism with the medium so that the microorganism will be very happy to live in the in your medium. It always gives best growth and high yield. But the thing is that elemental analysis is time consuming and expensive. So it is not easy to study the whole composition of the microorganism. Even if it is a small microorganism, this study will take long time. And sometimes it may not produce the good results also. Uh, and in this study also, we are not considering the interaction between the components. We are just studying the effect of individual component. If the microorganism need this much amount of mineral, we are just providing that much amount. So like with that, it is working. Fourth, method is one factor at a time it is a closed system we are not doing it for the all components we are doing it only for the selected components it is actually a classical method of doing it one factor at a time we have so many different variables in the system the ph is different temperature is different maybe the carbon source is different and if you select a single carbon source we can use it different concentration if you are using uh, for the carbon source you have maybe 10 20 choices if you select it, one of the carbon source at what, what concentration it should be used so it's very complicated system so many different parameters uh, each parameters can be uh, applied in different concentrations or different levels so one factor at a time what we do we change only one parameter at one time so we are running an experiment all parameters are fixed at a, fixed in a point in fixed rates and we will change only one so for example if you are running a fermentation at first experiment we are changing only the temperature so we are setting up a different uh, conical flask everything is same in all conical flask except the incubation temperature so once after the experiment we are analyzing the yield and the maximum yield temperature is fixed as the 
like optimum temperature once we done with the temperature we will run the second set of experiment in this experiment temperature will be constant everything else will be constant but we will change the ph in next set we will change the carbon source in another one we will change the nitrogen source so step by step in every step we are changing only one parameter that's what's called one factor at a time uh, uh, time design it's based on classical method of changing one independent variable while fixing all other uh, variables at a fixed level uh, but in this disadvantage of this method is we cannot study the interaction we cannot study the uh, relationship between the incubation temperature and the carbon source because in one experiment either we are changing temperature or we are changing the carbon source we are not changing the carbon concentration of the carbon source and the temperature together then only we can say whether there is an interaction is there if you are using this type of carbon source uh, what temperature is best you cannot say it from this experiment because we are considering only one factor at a time and uh, interactions are not studied so only few parameters can be studied because there are large varieties of parameters there if you want to study all the parameters for a fermentation there may be 100 or 1000 parameters that need to be studied so it's a closed end system we are selecting few parameters and we are running a study on it it is time consuming if you want to do it for more com more components it is always time consuming and expensive let me show you an illustration of the one factor at a time uh, design in this at the first experiment we are changing only one parameter that is ph everything else, else is uh, fixed so we are trying it for the ph from 2 to 10 and we found that 4 is the best ph in next experiment we are fixing all other parameters except temperature so we are running different test uh, text uh, at different temperature 10 to 90 and we found that 30 is the best in the next set of experiment we are trying different types of carbon source we have glucose sucrose uh, mannose fructose silos maltose different uh, carbon sources out of it we found that silos is the best then we look for the in another set of experiment the next set of experiment we are trying different nitrogen sources next we are trying different amino acids then metal ions so in every set of experiment we are changing only one parameters and finally we are getting a high producing media next we have factorial design factorial design is somewhat a, a closed dense system if you are doing a full factorial design uh, it is not actually we can say that's an open-ended system but full factorial design is practically very difficult so we are mostly doing a partial factorial design which is a closed end system so what we do is that examine all possible combinations of all parameters in factorial design so we are we the previous uh, slide if you have seen we are changing different temperature ph temperature carbon source nitrogen etc if you are doing a factorial design with it we should we make a medium which is 2 ph and we incubate in all this temperature all this diff tem different temperature so we should have different flask we make medium in ph2 and different flask will be incubated in different temperature and this ph2 medium will also have different carbon sources so and ph2 medium also have different nitrogen sources they also have different amino acid and different metal ions so we are trying all the possible combinations and if you are taking ph3 we need to do the same ph4 we need to do the same just like we are just trying all the possible combinations and want to find out which is the best combinations so uh, each parameters are uh, varying independently we are not looking into the which temperature and ph we are not looking into that we are changing independently and we are studying all the possible combinations and the variation parameters can be done at the two or more levels two levels means the plus or minus either we will take maybe if we are using two level design we will take only ph two ph values high and low but if you are taking three levels we can take say high medium and low if you are taking five five different levels of ph you can say ph 4 5 6 7 8 so things like that can done in this one um, in this study effect of each factor is at, in, at interactions are studied it's a complete study we are studying the effect of individual factors as well as the its interaction effects and once we have done this study we will use this uh, results of this study 
to make equations that describe the experimental results. Once we have the equation, we can actually predict the effect of each factors. Uh, as I mentioned before, there is a complete factorial design. In complete factorial design, we are considering every possible combinations of all parameters at all levels. Uh, in that design, the, we need to do large number of experiments. I mean, very large number of experiments, which is practically most of the time impossible. So, if you want to study uh, n number of parameters, the n in a usual experiment may be 100 or something like that. If you want to study all parameters, the number of parameters will be more than 100 and how much levels you want to study. If you take a simple example of temperature, you actually need to know which temperature is the best, whether 25, 26, 27, maybe up to 50. You don't have any idea which temperature works for you. So the number of levels will be like that, the pH. The pH you may say uh, the 5, 5.1, 5.2, up to 8.0 or 10.0. So how much levels you need to understand. Uh, so the equation is x raised to n. So if you are analyzing all parameters at all levels, the value will be a super high value. So that is practically more or less impossible. Mm, it is doable, but it, it is very difficult to do. So people used to do partial factorial design. In partial factorial design, we are not considering all parameters or we are considering only at the two, three levels. So one such a partial factorial design is two factorial designs. In this two factorial design, we are only analyzing whether the component uh, is good or bad for the fermentation whether the carbon source is good or bad for the fermentation, whether a particular mineral addition of copper, copper ions is good or bad. That's only answer. So you will, will use two conditions. One is plus and one is minus. Plus means we are adding the compound. Minus means, means we are not adding the compound. So the two factorial design is used to analyze antagonistic or synergistic effects, whether the compound we are adding, whether the growth factor you are adding have a positive effect or a negative effect on the productivity. That's the only thing we are measuring in the two factorial designs. So I am stopping here and I will be continuing the different uh, strategies for media optimization in my next lecture. Thank you.